Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos where I show how I've painted some titans from Games Workshop's Adeptus Titanicus game. I've chosen the metallic purple and black scheme of Legia Muldaxis for these miniatures. Part 1 focuses on how I'm going to tackle the armour panels and putting down the first couple of layers of colour. So the first step away with the Muldaxis scheme is basically to get, a, um, get everything undercoated and then a layer of silver on. So you'll see that the two sprues in front of me, and I've got one off to the side, um, which are all the armour panels. Um, what I've actually done on these is I've included the gun casings for some of the guns that I'm going to um, and weapons that I'm going to use. You've got the two Reaver heads that I've picked, and this is the Sarastas leg panels. Um, the heads I've actually of the the actual the, the Titans I've put together, and I've put a little bit of wire in the back um, and these will all I'll do all of these in one hit I've done exactly the same with the weapons so they'll they'll get covered in silver and then I can do any other bits and bobs the actual titans themselves have all been glued together let me move this out of the way uh, they've all been glued together um, minus the the weapons and the armor panels um, everything's been given a coat of chaos black the Titans have actually been glued to a slot, super glued to a slotter base that's got a magnet on. Um, these are my little holders that I use, which have just got a piece of metal on there, so it applies nice and easy. And I've done exactly the same. Just I was going to say I've used 32 mil bases for this. I've done the same for the Reavers as well. So the first step is to is airbrushing. Now you can choose if you wish to use a can of lead belcher. I'd still suggest that what you probably want to do is to give everything a coat of chaos black. What that does is that makes sure that um, it binds into the um, plastic and gives it all a very consistent finish. What sometimes you can get is with the plastic slight blemishes um, that will come through. Um, and I thought, my personal opinion is that sil the silver, the lead belcher, it comes through a lot more. Um, it also means that if you, um, the lead belcher, I find sometimes if you overspray it, you can get a bit of a mottling effect, which though we probably will want some mottling, we don't want it on everything. So the, the silver colour I'm going to be using is Scale 75's Black Metal. Now, the reason I'm using Scale 75 is because I really like paint. Uh, they go on really super smooth. If you wanted to use other manufacturers, um, Vallejo Metal Colour, um, I think they do a, a dark metal, an irony type colour, that's fine. Um, lead Belcher would work exactly the same. If you don't have an airbrush, paint it with a brush with Lead Belcher. Um, with the Scale 75 paint, I tend to use um, normal Vallejo Thinner. Make sure you give these a good old shake. Just mix it round. Now, one thing when airbrushing metallics, so you can see how that runs off the cup there. Probably a little veering onto the thick side, but that's fine. Um, one thing to remember when, when airbrushing metallics is you will find that they separate as time goes on. What you'll need to do every now and again is to either backflow. Uh, just to, to spread the metallic pigments through the paint or just use your um, cheap paintbrush um, just to kind of mix it up. I tend to backflow. I know some people don't like doing that. And then literally all you're aiming to do is just get a good coverage of silver all over the panels. Um, you don't need to be particularly precise with any of this because you're just getting down a standard silver. Um, the thing to do is to make sure that you cover all of it. Um, I'm going to do panels, armour panels that I'm not actually going to or I don't intend to use. However, if I make a mistake then it's, it's possible that I will use them. And you just want to do, do the armour panels and do exactly the same with the actual Titans themselves. 
so just get a nice covering all over over them. The reavers are a little bit different, um, although you're still covering them the same because they've actually got big armor panels um, molded onto the actual body. So the same process, you just want to cover these. What we'll do, as you'll see later on, is we'll actually mask bits off so that we don't taint um, from the armor panel colors onto the bits that we want metallic. So I'm going to finish this. This is probably a good couple of hours. So I will finish this off camera. Um, I hope you and we'll then carry on in a bit. Purple and probably black Templar. So what that does is that applies them as a filter. So you get this nice metallic underneath uh, with the colour on the top, um, which quite quite matches um, the uh, Forge World colour plates that you know the artwork that they do now if i just applied contrast on top of this it would turn out very very dark and there wouldn't be enough depth to it um, you could go with the lighter one but again you you'd lose that sort of rich depth around the shadows and things like that so the next step is to basically lighten the center of these panels and then the third step will be will apply a, a brighter highlight um, and a bit of mottling perhaps the paint I will be using is Iron Hand Steel. Uh, this is actually the Forge World one, uh, but the, the, they've converted that into the main Citadel range, so it's fine. Uh, this, I would say in tone, is very similar to Citadel's Dawnstone. So if this was standard Mechanicus Grey, this would be Dawnstone. Um, it's a steel, not a silver. You'll notice that, that, that when you look at these paints, you'll actually realise what that means. Uh, this has still got quite a bit of grey. You wouldn't say it was silvery. It, it's kind of still a grey steely colour. Um, so we will be doing very similar as we did before but less. So we will use, I'm going to use um, Vallejo thinner again. You could use Forge World solution if you've still got some of that but you, it, it's a personal choice. So not quite thick enough like I say so it, as this is an air paint you probably need less thinner than I just put in yeah that's pretty good as always you should always put the lids on paint when you've finished let's make sure that's properly mixed there we go. Don't do too. If ever you do blow back, don't do too much because what some people do is, if they crank the trigger back, it will actually shoot it up the inside of the barrel, um, and you don't really want that because that is a complete enough pain to clear off. So I'm actually going to show you what I'm going to do on the missile pod because I think it's a lot easier. So basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit the inside of the panel, but leave a sort of a darkness around the edge. It doesn't need to be precise um, and because heresy type era models um, benefit from a, a much more realistic paint style what I would do is I wouldn't do too much underneath so that way this will naturally become darker when we apply the contrast this will naturally be lighter so literally you just want to apply it. I'm not even sure whether this is going to pick up very well on camera um, This also has the benefit of actually smoothing some of those pigments out a little bit further. Even though the scale 75 has a really got really fine pigment in, you will find that you still occasionally get a little bit of dappling um, where you can kind of see the um, the pigment separate. So that's half of it. And you can see, I was going to say, I believe on the camera, you can see that this side here is much lighter than the other side. And that's the effect we're, we're looking for. 
Um, like I say, you are probably just do the side of this. Like so, and on the back piece, just to make it sort of blend in a little bit. But um, like I say, underneath I won't bother. Only do this on the armour panels. Um, we want to leave that nice dark steely colour on the actual chassis of things like the Knights and the Titans. You'll still want to do the, 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 the little armour panels, so be careful. One trick, you don't really need to mask stuff off because we can quite easily go back to that base silver and redo it. One tr trick is there's no reason why you can't just use your thumb to... So there we go. And that way you know that it, it's not going to have got onto this bit here. Um, in fairness, always look out with where you're going to put an armour panel. If I hit this with the lighter silver, it's not going to make any difference because you get an armour panel on there. So this is now going to take a little bit of time. So what I will do is I will go through off camera and do all of the um, starter set with this. And then we'll come back and I will show you how I do the um, final stage of the silvers. Hopefully you found part one useful. Part two should be up in the next few days. Please leave any comments or questions below and feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching.